Well, welcome to Community Talk. My name is Dimple Sandu Johnson. I'm the Volunteer Services Coordinator at Leonardo's Children's Museum. This is my colleague, Heather Newman. She's our Floor Manager and Animals Coordinator. Um, we're here today to talk a little bit about our New Year's Eve party coming up, our need for volunteers. You'll get to learn about the animals um, as well as our membership. So to begin with, I wanted to let you know that on um, January, on December 31st, we're having a New Year's Eve party from 1 p.m. to 3.15 p.m. It's going to have games, crafts, face painting, refreshments, goodie bags, hats, noisemakers. Um, we'll be ringing in the new year for the kids at um, 3 p.m. with bubble wrap, fireworks, and a balloon drop. It's a thousand balloon balloon drop. Um, so 3 p.m. local time here is actually going to be midnight in Iraq, and we'll be honoring members of the military um, with a special greeting um, for our New Year's Eve, and we'll have a live Facebook feed, um, hoping that they'll be able to see it in Iraq. Um, and it's going to be sponsored by Safe Light, our auto glass, and the tickets are available for non-members. It's $10. For members, it's $5, and we're doing a special military discount for $3 with ID. And I'd like to introduce you to Heather Newman Hi um, and her friend here, Pedro, and wanted to learn more about Pedro. So what is Pedro? Pedro is a chinchilla. Um, chinchillas are very specialized animals that are probably extinct in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few that live at Leonardo's. Um, Pedro has been with us probably about six years now. Um, we aren't sure of his age when he came to live with us, so we aren't sure how old he is. Um, but he is a wonderful animal for the children to meet. Um, they come from a place where there's no water above the freezing line in the Andes Mountains. Um, so they can kind of learn that there are animals built for different environments. Uh, they take dust baths. The kids love to see them take a bath in the dust. Mm -hmm. um, they're jumpers. They can jump six feet off the ground. Oh, wow. Uh, they have the softest fur in the whole world, yeah. um, the densest fur in the world, um, and they have wonderful little personalities. Um, they make about 20 different vocalizations, mm -hmm. um, and we'll often try to tell you what they need or what they want. Um, they have very specialized eyes and ears for um, protection in their environment. Um, and they're crepuscular animals, which means they're awake at dawn and dusk. So they have those huge pupils to help them see really well in that light. Can't see very good in the daytime or at night, um, but that in-between line is um, their special spot. <laughs> Where does Pedro live at Leonardo's? Leonardo's um, has a wonderful critter clubhouse. Mm -hmm. um, we have... I think about 23 different species that oh, wow. live in that room now. Um, the Critter Clubhouse is a place where children can come and learn about animals and what makes them different from each other and how they're specialized for the places that they come from. Um, and they really get to see animals they wouldn't see uh, mm -hmm. out in their backyards or even as common pets. Some of ours, you know, we like to take some in that are more exotic, um, things they wouldn't see every day. And almost all of our animals are rescues um, or just need a home. Uh, we purchase a few, but most of them come to us from other places um, and provide a wonderful experience for the children. What kind of exotic animals are there? Well, we have several kinds of lizards that people wouldn't see as often in their homes. Um, we've got an Egyptian whip tail. We have a a very loved chameleon. Uh, the community knows him and loves Waldo very much. Um, we have a legless lizard that looks like a snake because uh, we thought that was a neat thing for the children to be able to see. Um, we have a pygmy hedgehog, an African pygmy hedgehog. Um, we have a gecko from the Middle East. We have uh, turtles from here in America and also from Russia. So oh, wow. we have a pretty diverse group in the critical Turtles class. from Russia. Yes. And I think you have a snake as well, eh? Uh, we actually have three snakes. Um, we have Gaia, Ringo, and Orlando. Uh, Gaia is a favorite. She has been at the museum um, for about 13 years now. Uh, she has met probably more children than I will ever meet in my lifetime. Oh, wow. And I work with them every day, so. <laughs> so is there anything that animal lovers in Enid can do to help? Yes. with the Critter Clubhouse. Um, when you have that many animals, um, not only do you need food and supplies, you have vet bills. Um, Dr. Olson is our uh, vet and he takes very good care of our animals for us. Um, but we do have a lot of things we need to purchase. And we do have community members that sponsor our animals. You can sponsor an animal at $75 a year, uh -huh. and you get your name up on the wall in the animal room in the Critter Clubhouse, and you can choose an animal to put on your sign. Um, 
that you'd like for some of those funds to go toward. But those funds help us uh, buy food and supplies for the animals and extra things that they might need, um, like little logs they can chew up um, for our chewers, things like that. Um, or you can be an exclusive sponsor. Um, three sponsorships would be $225, but for $30 less, for $195, um, you can be the exclusive sponsor for an animal for the year, and nobody else will be able to sponsor that animal. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, so and then when the kids come to visit, we can get their animal out for them to pet and that kind of a thing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So those are our animals at Leonardo's Critter Clubhouse. Yes. And we also wanted to let you know about some of our volunteer opportunities. We are always looking for volunteers to come out and help us with our field trips on our busy days, weekends. Um, you can volunteer occasionally or you could volunteer throughout the year and have like a set shift every week or every month. Um, our staff is very kind and they love to work with our volunteers. We're all working as a team. Um, we always need volunteers to help us with, you know, show, showing our exhibit, showing the animals. You could receive animal training if you're interested. And we also need volunteers to help us with the AQ um, and just doing everyday things around. They help us with the jobs that help keep your children safe. They help us um, with cleanliness and sanitization and that sort of a thing. Um, we're very grateful to have all of our volunteers. Okay. And we also wanted to let you know about our memberships. Our memberships are a great gift um, for Christmas this year. It is an educational gift for a whole year. Um, they come in different packages. Uh, yeah, we have packages for groups, uh, families of four, mm -hmm. families of six, families of eight. We have a little additional thing called a plus one that doesn't have to be a named person. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a wonderful gift for a family because you're providing an entire year of education and fun for that family. And I believe we have a new semester starting in January. We actually have several of our programs have new semesters in January. Our science club mm -hmm. um, starts toward the end of January. It's a wonderful um, program sponsored by OG&E. Mm -hmm. um, it's an after school program for third through sixth graders uh, and they get to get their hands on science. And how long is it? Um, that's an eight week program. Mm -hmm. um, I think they do skip a week for spring break. Mm -hmm. And then our homeschool uh, classes, our spring semester will be starting soon as well. Do we have any art events coming up that you know of? Uh, well, we always have Art Quest on the first and third Saturdays. That's a little program. It's about 10 or 15 minutes uh, at 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock where the kids can come in and see a neat demonstration. Um, and then on the opposite Saturdays, we have... A Oh, I messed up. It's Art Quest on the first and third Sundays. We do art projects. Uh, on the second and fourth, we do the science projects at 11 and 2. So. And what do the science projects look like? Um, the last one we did, we did candy science for Christmas, mm -hmm. um, where we got to see how some of the colors will move off of the candies and how they'll arrange themselves in liquid. Um, we have done magnets. We got out microscopes a few weeks ago and looked at some neat slides and stuff, let the kids get their hands on some microscopes. So it's a little bit different every week. We did an art project too. Um, my memory recalls where we had children come in and paint and create things and we used their artwork for our thank you and our holiday cards this year. Um, there was two children whose holiday, card, whose holiday art that we picked for our holiday cards. So there's many times that some of the art projects that we have, they're not just projects for the day. Um, they also get included in different things that Leonardo's does. Do you have anything else you'd like to say about Leonardo's? That you'd like to Just share that it is one of the most wonderful places to spend the day with your family um, we uh, are loved in the community we're supported in the community we have volunteers uh, that we couldn't get by without um, and we want everyone to come see us okay well from Leonardo's we wanted to wish you happy holidays Merry Christmas and a happy new year um, thank you for joining us today um, once again, Heather Newman, our floor manager and animals coordinator with our special guest, Pedro. And you're more than welcome to contact me and myself, Dimple Sandu Johnson, um, volunteer services coordinator, if you are interested in volunteer opportunities at Leonardo's Children's Museum. Thank you. Hello. I'm Cliff Reporter of the Booker T. Washington Community Center, located at 800 South 5th Street. Please come out and visit us at some of our programs, and please watch for us on Community Talk.
Hi, I'm Matt Lohman, CEO of Hope Outreach Ministries. With me today, I have Doug Bushman, who's the Director of Retail Ministries. We're going to talk to you a little bit about the Hope Outreach Thrift Store. Well, Doug, welcome. Thanks for being with me today. I appreciate it. It's good to be here again. Yeah. Well, uh, any opportunity we have to share with the public uh, what, what's going on at Hope Outreach, and maybe a little bit, a little bit more information about Hope Outreach, I, I'm always excited to share. So um, if you could just help those who are watching, could you tell them a little bit about um, what the main purpose of the Hope Outreach Thrift Store is? Well, the Hope Outreach Thrift Store uh, exists to, to provide revenues for the ministries that Hope Outreach does. Mm -hmm. And those are uh, transitional homes from the Department of Corrections, a parenting ministry, uh, community care, which allows people to come in and earn vouchers for gas and groceries and uh, clothing, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then we also have an internal ministry in the thrift store also where we employ those who may find getting a job difficult. Okay. Um, and that's where, <clears throat> again, with the uh, when folks donate things and the items come in, we're able to turn those into cash, which do fund those other ministries that you that you listed. But the the one that I think most people don't re realize is the employment ministry of the thrift store. Can you tell me some of the background of some of the folks that uh, that we employ uh, at at Hope Outreach Thrift Store? Some of their background may be that they've been homeless. Uh, they may have been through. One thing I forgot was the homeless shelter that gets supported mm -hmm. by those revenues. Mm -hmm. And uh, they may come from uh, that avenue of just being fairly destitute mm -hmm. and they need a job. Uh, they may come from uh, having gone through substance recovery. They're at some point in recovery when we hire them. Mm -hmm. and Or uh, they could be out of the Department of Corrections uh, with uh, different offenses that might prevent them from getting a job. And we try to uh, minister to those that are in need of jobs like that. We also have a core of people who are uh, don't have that background. They're mm -hmm. there to minister to the other people, their fellow workers. Awesome. Uh, how many do we employ through the thrift store? It varies. It can run anywhere from around 20 up to 30 people mm -hmm. and uh, also various other uh, entities uh, will be providing uh, paid labor to us at times too. Mm -hmm. Where we supervise and help train. That's correct. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, can you tell me what are some of the things that we are trying to teach or get across to some of the employees uh, when they come in and then uh, uh, you know, as we prepare them to, to take that next step? Well, many, it's uh, a whole change of attitude towards themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I often in interviews, I tell them I'm looking for for you to be that person if it takes three miles walking from three miles out of town to the edge of town and another three miles to the store, I want you to start envisioning, envisioning yourself as that person mm -hmm. who will do what it takes to prove themselves and to get through life and to take a step up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one, that's one of the things uh, we try to uh, get the focus on. We also try to teach proper work ethic Mm -hmm. all over, not just getting to work on time, but mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to provide, provide an environment that is free <laughs> from uh, a lot of coarse language, that kind of thing, and they can enjoy themselves in that type of environment mm -hmm. and not feel threatened because of that type of thing that can go on in workplaces at times. Mm -hmm. so that's a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, too, one of the things that, uh, that you, you work on a lot is for them to be able to take supervision and crit criticism. You know, that's not easy for us. It's not a natural thing, but uh, that's a difficult thing sometimes. Well, that that's true. And uh, at times when, uh, again, <clears throat> when they first come in, I'll be speaking to them of, we don't always have time to make nice. Sometimes it's it's a, just a direct, a direct command. Mm -hmm. Even though we're a faith-based organization, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a, a really, we've got to get this done type of thing. Yeah. And we need to be able to take uh, just a direct order from a supervisor. Right. Well, in uh, dealing in retail as well, we know that uh, we have some of the most fantastic, wonderful clients and people who come in all the time. Uh, just fun shoppers. We get to pray with them, talk with them, and things like that. And sometimes other people come in and they're not so nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. But when dealing with the public of any type, mm -hmm. uh, you have not some nice people come in and we have to 
often learn, uh, I hope I've learned myself, <laughs> but employees need to learn that uh, even though the customer may not always be right, the customer is always first. Mm -hmm. If we can possibly uh, keep that customer's business and keep them happy, regardless of how they come in, that's what we want to train them to do because mm -hmm. our employees eventually <laughs> become employees of this community and other places, mm -hmm. and we want that to build our community up. Absolutely. And that's, that's a, a great skill to, to have. So, <clears throat> and again, I, I already know the answer to this question, but do all of our employees leave us successful? <clears throat> I wish I could say yes, <laughs> yeah. but they don't. Uh, our, I guess our attitude and our plan is to throw out a lifeline to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And if they'll grab onto that lifeline, we'll be patient. Mm -hmm. But sooner or later, policy takes effect. No matter what their troubles may be or failings may be, if they're not able to grab that lifeline and take uh, hold of the support that's given them there, they eventually they have to leave. And that's sad, but mm -hmm. there's other people waiting uh, to be helped too. Yeah. And I can tell you, over I've been with Hope for seven years, and uh, over that seven years, we've had some second second chances where <laughs> where they they didn't quite work the first time, but they came in the second time, and and things worked out well. But uh, yeah, well, sometimes been, we've been on third <laughs> second chances, and it still didn't work. I think I've been accused of giving them the tenth <laughs> second, <laughs> tenth chance. second chance. But uh, a lot of that <clears throat> is just seeing is there is there growth. If they're taking baby steps, then they're they're progressing. Okay. And if they're regressing and just not really uh, taking that opportunity, then sometimes they're not successful. Yeah. But I would add this, we have a great joy in that uh, many of our, our employees, even at this moment, they're, they're being successful. They have really uh, grabbed hold of that lifeline that's been offered to them and mm -hmm. I'm very, very proud of them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. To see them get a place to stay, get a license get off of probation, get off of ankle brace. I mean, there's so many vic have, small victories that go on behind the scenes. It's, it's we have a lot of little small parties. Yeah, so, <laughs> That's right, so. absolutely. Well, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, there's something new that we're getting ready to start uh, with, with a thrift store, with our ministries, we're very excited about. Uh, we love opportunities like Ena TV where we get to share with the public and connect that way. But it's difficult sometimes to to share what we want to share with the public uh, or those people who are interested in our ministries. Um, so we're getting ready to start a, a new text messaging um, communication system. Can you, tell, can you tell the folks a little bit about that? That's, uh, it'll be uh, texting to our number. Uh, it's 31... Uh, nine, sorry, I had it memorized. <laughs> 996. And uh, that'll allow us to communicate with our donors uh, and with our customers. Mm -hmm. And we just want to keep what we're doing in front of, of people, what we're trying to accomplish in the ministries, and uh, keep them uh, uh, just a fresh look at, as we progress and as, as we um, uh, open up new ministries that they can know about it. So. Okay, so that number again is 31. Nine six nine nine six three one nine nine six. Yes. And what would they text to that uh, number? Yes to hope. Okay. Uh, and we'd hope that as a customer uh, that's buying at the cash register, that that would be yes to hope. Mm -hmm. And as a donor, uh, they would text hope donor. Hope donor. Okay. Yeah. So that way, if if they're wondering, you know, what what we might need or something else, then we might send a text out to them and just say, you know, we really could use some coats, or we could really use this exactly, or that at exactly. this time. And I'll correct the, uh, myself on the yes to hope. It's a Y-E-S, the number two. Okay. Hope, H-O-P-E. Okay. And hope donor is just hope donor. Hope donor. donor. <laughs> so <laughs> either one of those ways they can get connected and uh -huh. and get going on that. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> now, I've I've got some things I, I they text to me. Uh, uh, my, my daughter's uh, youth minister does this which really helps me as a, as a youth parent to know uh, the school systems do this kind of text messaging. Um, what about people who would be concerned of uh, they're going to be bombarded with texts? Uh, 
one, we won't. <laughs> and two, okay. Yeah. And two, it's limited. And we'll, we give information, hey, there's going to be no more than six texts per month. But the fact is, it'd be quite a, uh, quite a bit fewer. But uh, we're not going to bombard them uh, with that type of thing. So. Okay. So that's something exciting. We'll be having some signs up in the store and, and uh, uh, in our back alley so people can kind of look for that again. But 31996 and yeah. either Hope Donor or Yes Number two, hope. Yes. All right. So. Very good. And I'll have to play that back if they want. To. <laughs> um, well, okay. So we were talking about donations again. Um, so when we have that donations and people drop off, we're able to take them in, process them, and we get everything from the kitchen sink all the way to some obscure things sometimes, which we're very thankful for. Something I always want you to be able to cover when we're on this because it's a, a good reminder is what happens to those donations that that get dropped off on a Sunday afternoon or a because we're closed on Sundays or after our hours after seven o'clock once we're not there what happens to those donations that people mean for good they mean for good <coughs> uh, recent experience Sunday afternoon I went by the store beautiful flat screen TV that worked as I'm driving down to another one of our facilities, um, people in a pickup picked it up and took it. So that's within this week, that's one experience. They get stolen, they get uh, rifled through, mm -hmm. um, they can get soaked in a rain, that mm -hmm. type of thing. So the thing is, please donate during hours. It would help a whole lot. And I understand everybody wants to uh, be generous, mm -hmm. and that may be the only time they have it, it seems like, but most of the time it's gone before we can get to it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the thing is, too, is I, I will just say that uh, I've had people say, well, if they needed it, then they, they probably needed it more than anybody else. Well, I can tell them a lot of these folks who are taking these things aren't needy people. They're greedy people. Well, taking these things. that can happen. You can follow them directly to the pawn shop sometimes. <laughs> and it's nothing against pawn shops. <laughs> right, but, right. But that's just kind of what's happening a yeah. lot of times. So please donate during store hours if at all possible. Or yeah. call us and we can pick it up if, if there's enough uh, stuff that, that you need donated. Right. We, uh, by calling the store number, uh, we do schedule a truck uh, four days a week, five days a week, actually. Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, if you have something to donate, you might allow two or three days notice for us because sometimes we're booked out quite a ways. Mm -hmm. So you just want to call ahead. Right. And that number is 237-4673. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, again, touching on the donation side of things, we have Christmas coming up. Um, and just wanted to touch base with that as uh, people get a lot of new things. I know this happens in my house. New things come in. We need to have room for them. So when they have the old things that, that they don't have places for anymore and they'd like to donate them, what's the best thing to do? Where, where should they donate? How should they donate? Okay. Well, during the weekdays, we have a, a store open from 9 to 7, and at the north door of the store in the alley, we'll take donations there. We usually take the larger donations there, and we'll ask people if they don't mind to take... Uh, smaller donations uh, down about a block and a half uh, to the east, east. east of us mm -hmm. and we'll take the small do smaller donations there that's where we sort those out and price them and mm -hmm. that type of thing and it, there's still time to get that tax uh uh the tax, tax receipt so tax okay. receipt right yeah we'll and, see. Uh, and traditionally the week between <coughs> christmas and new year's has been really heavy donations we depend on that to get through winter because they do slow down in january february mm -hmm. the weather and uh, all, with yeah. weather and coldness and that type of thing so uh, again thank you for your generosity before mm -hmm. and hope to see it this year too <laughs> amen well, Doug, hey, thanks for being with me today and, and sharing with the community a little bit more about Hope Outreach Ministries uh, Thrift Store and, and the hidden ministry that goes on beyond the goods, beyond the processing and everything else, what we're doing with the lives. And uh, it's, it's good to have that opportunity. Uh, I'm thankful every day. I had a wish in life that I could do this as I got older. I'm getting to. 
It's awesome. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And again, thank you for joining us uh, on Community Talk. Until next time, I'm Matt Lohman, CEO of Hope Outreach, Doug Bushman, Director of Retail Ministries. Uh, just thank you so much for your, your attention and uh, your support of Hope Outreach Ministries. Hi, I'm Brenda Bingham, Blue Star Mother President, Chapter 11, Enid, Oklahoma. We are a 501c3. We send care packages to our troops and we take donations and we're at the Oakwood Mall between the Cookie Company and Dillard's. Stop by, say hi, or drop off a donation. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you and come watch us on Community Talk.